Hello, everyone. Brian, Gabriel, Jadeep, and myself, who I call the Avengers, have come together to analyze the Advocacy Coalition framework. Our presentation will have three sections. I will first talk about the ACF. I will then apply it to a case study and then discuss its limitations. Let's first start with understanding the ACF. The ACF is a methodology to understand the process of policy change over a long time period. It focuses on actors as members of coalitions within the policy process, and they fit within something called policy subsystems. Also, the ACF focuses on technological innovation in the policy process. This is because when it was first developed, it was used in the area of environmental studies where there was a lot of technological innovation occurring. The three fundamental premises of the ACF are number one, policy change and learning happens over a time span of at least a decade. Policy subsystems are central to understanding policy change. And lastly, policy should be considered as an extension of our belief systems. It is not something objective, rather it is a reflection of policy actors' values and beliefs. There are also nine hypotheses of the ACF. Because of time, I won't go into them here, but we've included them in the appendix of the slides for you to take a look at. Here is the ACF framework. This is a very complex diagram with a lot going on, but there are only three things I want to draw your attention to. Number one, there's the policy subsystem. Here, policy actors come together to form coalitions, and the coalitions work together to influence government decisions. In influencing those decisions, it creates the policy outputs and policy impacts. These outputs and impacts are a reflection of the policy actors within these coalitions, values, and beliefs. Number two, there are external system events. These events are influenced by the subsystem, and these events themselves can influence the subsystem. Number three, there are relatively stable parameters where policy learning occurs. The external events influence these stable parameters and the policy learning within it, and also the policy learning within these parameters influence the policy subsystem. And I'll explain this more when we get to the case study. And now a bit of context on the ACF. It was developed by Paul Sabatier in the 1980s. It is growing in popularity amongst scholars and it can be applied to a wide range of policy case studies, but it is still typically applied to environment and energy case studies. And lastly, it's mainly used in a Western context. I'm now going to apply the ACF to our case study of LGBT plus rights in the United States. Policy reflects values, and this is true of the policy actors, which come together to form advocacy coalitions. In the case study, the LGBT plus rights coalition, which is formed up of policy actors, were bound together by the principle of no discrimination and individual choice. In contrast to them, there was a competing advocacy coalition, a heteronormative coalition bound together by the principle of a heterosexual concept of family unit and values. The next thing is policy subsystems, which advocacy coalitions operate in. What creates a policy subsystem? Well, it's a dissatisfaction of or a neglect of a particular problem by an existing subsystem, and hence advocacy coalitions tend to form their own and operate within them. This is true of the LGT plus rights movement, because prior to the 1960s, there wasn't a subsystem which was working towards their values. Now, the policy subsystems are amorphous concepts, but they are bounded by geography and specialization, interest groups and media institutions. And also as well, the subsystems are nested vertically, which is they operate on federal, state and county government levels. And they're also operating horizontally, which is they affect the judiciary, the executive and the legislature. Now let's put this together to understand the policy processes. As I mentioned earlier, there's a policy subsystem. In this instance, it's comprised of coalitions working towards getting LGBT plus rights. Now, they are influenced by external events, which are influenced by the subsystem or independent of it. So for instance, presidential transitions or the AIDS epidemic in the 1980s, which really brought it to the forefront. 
policy changes happen within stable parameters. This timeline spans from 1953 roughly to 2020. And let's take a look at policy change occurred within that. And I'm gonna do this applying the ACF framework. I've spoken to you about the policy subsystem changes that occurred and subsequently how this influences external events. These external events critically influence the relatively stable parameters. That is the policy learning that occurred in this parameter changes because of external events and the subsystem. What this then influences in the case of the LGBT plus rights quest in America is that there's basic constitutional change within structures. In America, in the last 10 years, two seminal moments of constitutional change happened in 2015 when the United States Supreme Court ruled that same-sex marriages are constitutional and legal, and in 2020 when the Supreme Court further ruled that discrimination against transgendered individuals is illegal. Coalitions expand and they form. This is important to remember within the framework. For instance, in 1969, after the Stonewall riots, the LGBT plus rights movement was primarily composed of gay men advocating for gay rights. But shift forward to 1979, and you get the first march on Washington for both gay and lesbian rights. This slide here, another timeline, captures the policy learning happens within the relatively stable framework. Now, the policy learning case study to give you an example of is that of the American Psychiatric Association. In 1952, they ruled that homosexuality is a mental disorder, but then shifting to 1973, influenced by external events, but also independent learning within the policy process, they advocate that homosexuality is not a mental disorder and reverse their ruling. This has an effect on the policy process. The final point to make is that changes are made by winners within a policy subsystem. In this case study, a winner was the LGBT rights advocacy coalitions with the election of President Obama. In 2012, he publicly advocated for the right for same-sex couples to get married. But the winners can change. In 2016, President Trump was elected, and President Trump has sought to curtail the rights of transgendered individuals by banning them from serving within the military. This is a reflection of how winners within the subsystem affects policies. Finally, I'm going to talk about the limitations of the First, the ACF neglects the role of self-interest in the policy-making process. That is, at times, governments make politically expedient policy, which is motivated out of self-interest rather than reflecting values. Second, the ACF ignores the potential of hierarchically imposed reform to override the beliefs of subsystem advocacy coalitions. An example of this is the Indian Supreme Court's decision to decriminalize homosexuality. This overrode the prevailing beliefs of the conservative majority coalition within the LGBT rights plus subsystem. Third, in applying the ACF in academic studies, at times unsystematic methods of data collection have been used, which bring into question the efficacy of the ACF's applicability. Fourth, the ACF has been proven useful in treating policy retrospectively, but less so as a tool to provide policy recommendations. That is, for the policy practitioner on the ground, how useful is it in developing policy recommendations? This brings us to the conclusion of our presentation. To summarize, the three fundamental premises of the ACF are, first of all, policy change happens over a very long time span of a period of at least a decade, if not more. Second, policy change can be understood as occurring through policy subsystems, and third, and perhaps most importantly, policy is a reflection or an extension of values and beliefs. We as a group have applied this to the LGBT plus rights case study in the US, and we also outlined some limitations of the ACF. We hope this intrigues you and stimulates your thoughts to ask us some questions on the ACF. If you could please ask your questions by 4 p.m. on Monday, Singaporean time, we will get back to you in the evening. On behalf of the Avengers, thank you all so much.